Wasps are like super insect allies to us, and they do a lot to keep the environment in balance. I guess everything has its place. It's stinging, buzzing, flying, darting, and will probably kill you in your sleep since they take up residence in your curtains unbeknownst to you place. <sighs> well, I guess I ought to explain. So, wasps are part of the same order as bees and ants. Basically, anything that is not a bee or an ant in that order is a wasp. That means that yellow jackets are wasps and hornets are wasps too. Bees and ants are not wasps, they're just really closely related. Also, there are tens of thousands of wasp species. Don't buy your ticket to Jupiter just yet, though. See, wasps are split up into two groups, social wasps and solitary wasps. Solitary wasps are generally, well, just that, and generally won't bother you. It's the social wasps you probably think of when your blood starts pumping at the sound of that low hum. Uh-uh. Here's the thing though, only about a thousand species of wasp are social wasps, meaning that the vast majority are generally non-stingers. That's still a thousand too many in my book though. The largest wasps can reach lengths of almost two inches, while the smallest are a mere five thousandths of an inch. To put that into perspective, the largest wasp is about half the width of your hand, while the smallest could land on a single strand of human hair. That's a pretty drastic difference, and this just has me wondering why the stinging ones couldn't all be that small. To be fair though, like I said earlier, they really are beneficial. Most wasps help to keep insect populations at bay, and, like spiders, they're some of the best pest controllers. To see a wasp in your garden is actually usually a good sign because they help to get rid of crop destroying insects like aphids and caterpillars. In fact, without wasps, we wouldn't even have fig fruit as they are its only pollinators. So maybe they aren't all that bad. Still, seeing their nests gives me the heebie jeebies. Like, uh uh. Nope. Nope. What's surprising though is that a lot of wasp species build their nests underground. Yes, like those yellow jacket jerks. Most of the nests you may associate with wasps are built by a subfamily of wasps called paper wasps. Paper wasps build their nests out of wood fiber and saliva. Mmm, yum. Some other wasps might use mud though, like mud daubers, whose nests you've more than likely come across on the sides of buildings or under bridges. It really just depends on the wasp and whether or not they're social or solitary. Plus, a lot of wasps actually only live for about a year. Most social wasps found outside of the tropics will be born in the springtime as part of a brood from their colony's queen and die before winter, eating a bunch of fruit as a sort of last hurrah before they die. As for solitary wasps, usually it's all about the female emerging from hibernation, constructing nests, and filling them with nutrients for her young, such as insects and oh god, that's a tarantula. Yeah, that, that's a tarantula. Okay. The young hatch, breed, and then start the cycle over. Kind of interesting if you think about it, or completely diabolical. Really though, you probably only see the same wasp in a single year. After that, it's gone. They also come in tons of colors. Of course, there is the black with bright yellow stripes or warning spots, but they can be red and blue and pretty much anything in between. They're pretty recognizable by their narrow waist or their petiole, and in fashion, we've followed the trend of aiming to be wasp-waisted. So it would seem that wasps really aren't all that bad. Sure, they still incite terror in me even when I see them through a closed window, but I think knowing a little more about them helps me to appreciate them just a little more. Except for yellow jackets. Screw those guys in particular.